Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video. Do you struggle with seeing that you have some great technical skills like finding interesting subjects and your photos are sharp and in focus, but that you find that others' photos are more artistically appealing? It's very likely that what your photos are lacking are having compelling compositions, which really separate artistic photos from snapshots of convenience. In this video, I'll go through some of the most common composition mistakes that photographers make and give you practical tips to turn average photos into great ones. Don't forget to stay for my bonus tip where I'll show you why this doesn't work, but this does. My name is Simon Dantremont and I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. A common mistake people make is having people, pets, or wildlife in their photos, but not leaving room to look into. If you squash your subject against a side of your photo with no room, it's like punishing someone by making them stand in a corner. Also, the rest of the photo just seems to be out there getting ignored. When you have something with vision in your photo, you should give them room to look into, so to speak. Get that edge away from their face, and if you can align it, find something interesting or colorful or with patterns to fill that empty space. Empty space is okay too, but something that's complementary is a great addition. Mistake number two is to put your subject in the middle of your frame, but without any symmetry. What I mean by this is one, the middle is rarely the most interesting place to put your subject. Try putting them on one side, maybe juxtaposed or balanced by something else. Use the rule of thirds to place the areas of interest off to one side, for example. Secondly, the time to break this rule and place your subject in the middle is when you have symmetry. When having equal weight on both sides, the middle has a unique way of providing a balance. When a subject is looking directly at you, for example, is a great time to try placing them in the middle. These examples work best in the middle because they provide a balanced and equally proportional view or this surfer photo of mine, where the water spray here and the beautiful sky here provide a nice balance of interest to support the subject. By the way, I should mention, if you go to my website and sign up for my email list, you'll get a free guide on how to shoot in backlit situations. Link in the comments below. A derivative of placing your subject too close to the edge is losing your main elements out of the frame. This comes from not being able to fit your subject or important element in the shot and just including part of it and cutting off the rest. Unless you've really done this well, this doesn't usually work, unless it's a compelling leading line or a feature that one expects to go forever, like a long, lonely road. But for this log that wouldn't fit in my waterfall shot, it just looks bad. Get something you can fit all in, like this rock instead. What was your biggest composition mistake early in your photography journey? Let me know in the comments below and how you solved it. Mistake number four is having too many subjects or none at all. By too many subjects, I mean a photo where nothing is obviously the main feature. And if you ask four people what the subject is, you could get four different answers. In this photo, what's the subject? The lighthouse, the sun popping out from the clouds, the reflecting water, or this reflection on the rocks? Too many subjects in this one means that it isn't clear where the viewer should look. But in this photo here, I have made it clear where your eye should be drawn. Or in this photo of big waves, none of them are standing out as the main feature. But in this shot here, we know who the main actor is. Or in this photo, make it simple. Sometimes less is more. The other end of the spectrum is no subject. This is a common mistake with beginner landscape photographers where they want to photograph a beautiful view out into the vast ocean. Instead, you get half sky, half water, and a line between them, but no compelling feature or highlight. This photo has no subject. Instead, find something you can put in the foreground, a rock, a pattern in the sand, roots of a tree, or anything else that can anchor the photo with that beautiful view being in the background or add some flowers to a sunset, like in this photo. The next mistake I often see is the opposite of placing your subject in the middle, that is having your subjects too close to the edges, making them feel crowded. Now this is a careful balance, as one technique of composition is to leave some empty space. This is often done by placing your subject close to one side. The problem is this is a fine art. It can look good like this or like this, but if you slide too close to the edge, all of a sudden, it just doesn't work anymore. Go towards the edge and then come back a bit. Including something interesting in the negative space works well too, like this pink sky in this photo. 
The next common mistake is very prevalent, including in wildlife photography, the wrong perspective or angle. This means that the subject and its alignment isn't maximized with the rest of the scene. For example, here's a photo of a bird that I took while standing. Then all I did was get down lower and took the same photo with the exact same settings. Look at how that transformed the photo by getting it eye level and making the background and foreground out of focus. So this can be not shooting up or shooting down, rather getting to eye level, or not getting up or down when that's what will accentuate the subject. Shooting at your standing eye level, the same place from which anyone else would see the scene is rarely the place that'll make the most compelling image. The trick is to move around. Get your subject framed with other elements in the scene, like this photo I took just a few days ago. The trick here is when you've identified a subject, look around for angles, elements, or lines that can add to your photo. The next mistake I see is people not putting enough effort into getting the right background. One of the most important tips I tell people is the background is part of the photo too. This mistake, which I've made before, don't worry, is part of a laziness problem. We're just too lazy to move five feet to the right or five feet to the left to get an annoying or distracting element out from our background. Remember, if it's not adding to your photo, it's probably taking away from it. Like these people behind my line shot, waiting a bit for them to move or repositioning for the shot would greatly improve it. If they're not part of your plan, get those stop signs, trash cans, and buildings out of your photos. If you do leave them in, give them a compelling reason to be there, like being part of the story you're trying to tell. And I promised you a bonus tip, and that's the problem of shooting too tight. That is, filling the frame with your subject and not including other elements that tell a story about the subject. Where was it? When? What else was happening? These are all important clues to either support your subject or allow your viewer to start speculating and making up their own ideas about what this photo is all about. Find ways to give your subject some room and fill that room with other things that complement but not overpower your subject. Lines, textures, or colors are great examples. So not this, but this. There's nothing wrong with having your subject small in the frame. And that's my homework tip for those of you who want to take it on. Before my video next week, go out and take a photo where the subject is intentionally small in the frame. Let me know in the comments below if you got it. If you think you've got a good handle on composition, but you think your post-processing is holding you back, check out one of my recent videos where I share some of my favorite tips on post-processing in Lightroom, right here. If you thought this video was deserving, give it a like and YouTube will show it to even more photographers who are starting their own journey into this great hobby and helping them to get to the next level. I hope you can go out the very next time and take the compositions that help show off your photos in the way that they deserve. I know you can do it.